I test out the CF Moto 650 Adventura which is called CF Moto 650 MT elsewhere and compared it head to head with the Kawasaki Versus 650, Suzuki V-Strom 650 and the Triumph Tiger Sport 660. Each of them does at least one thing better than the rest but to pick an overall winner I did some research beyond the back to back test rides but before we dive into that let's start with looks. The Triumph Tiger Sport 660 to me is the most stylish looking of them all. CF Moto is second in the beauty pack pageant thanks to Kiska Designs. The Versus 650 has my heart because the dual headlamps remind me of my own Kawasaki and the only reason V-Strom 650 doesn't score high on looks is because it's not been facelifted in ages and while we're spending time on superficial things, let me indulge you with their exhaust notes. The CF Moto 650 Adventura and the Versus 650 may not be winning the sound contest but that's because of the parallel to an engine character which by the way is allegedly the same engine in both bikes. Interestingly, CF Moto and Kawasaki claim different power and torque figures but during the test ride, CF Moto ride quality felt slightly better than the Versus and I have a theory why that might be. You know, as a Kawasaki owner myself, I have found myself criticizing the clunky Kawasaki transmissions especially at low revs and low speeds during street rides. And maybe that's why CF Moto's butter smooth shifter with perfect clicks combined with my low expectations from a Chinese motorcycle led me to feel pleasantly surprised. But the fun began with the V-Strom 650's test ride. The V twin engine delivered torque in a way that made me giggle every time I twisted the throttle. The Tiger 660's triple cylinder engine does have more power and torque and it rode like a sport bike which I do like. But if I were to give giggle scores like Zach Quartz, I would still rank the V-Strom 650 higher than the rest. I I also like the Suzuki because they're not making us pay for a slipper clutch that in my humble opinion, none of these bikes need. Triumph took transmission overkill to the next level with a bi-directional quick shifter but at least they have it as optional so only the lazies need to pay for it. Which brings me to comfort. The seating position to me felt pretty comparable between the CF Moto, Kawasaki and the Suzuki with the Triumph feeling slightly sportier. The seat heights are marginally differentiated, the Versus 650 being the tallest and CF Moto offering an optional lower seat. But at 5 foot 8, I couldn't flat foot any of them. The ground clearance is quite similar across the board but to me the real differentiator was the seat padding of the Versus 650 which felt the most plush, followed by the CF Moto 650 Adventura for obvious reasons. The V-Strom seat isn't bad and the Tiger 660 seat is also a fair attempt. But if I bought either of these two, I would consider more comfy aftermarket seats, especially if I rode them for more than 150 miles. And by the way, Triumph and Suzuki, if you ever watch this video, 150 miles is barely a breakfast ride to us mile munchers. You should have thought of comfier seats. Anyway, on paper, without bags and accessories, all the bikes are well under the 500 pounds mark, but none of them felt heavy while riding. It's only while I was rolling or parking the bike that I realized that the V-Strom 650, even without the panniers, takes a little more muscle than the rest of them. Tiger 660 does legitimately feel light when stationary and surprisingly flickable while riding but that is also because of suspension and geometry. And while I leave suspension specs on the screen for you to compare, I will share a subjective evaluation of how the suspensions felt. And keep in mind, suspension feel and behavior depends on the rider weight, riding style and riding conditions among several other factors. I weigh 145 pounds, test rode all four motorcycles back to back at cruising pace, some cornering and sometimes found myself testing equipment limits. Riding conditions were pretty hot and humid at Daytona Beach, Florida 
and I got to ride within the city, some winding back roads, as well as some highway runs. And to me, the CF motor suspension felt functional, but nothing to ride home about. Versus 650 actually felt pretty similar. Tiger 660 is a little more sports biased and less comfort biased, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's uncomfortable. It's just not as plush as the V-Strom 650 is. In fact, I was impressed with the V-Strom 650 suspension for striking a very good balance between being plush and soaking up all bumps and still feeling planted mid-turn which is not easy to achieve at this price point. And while the brake specs have minor differentiations, like the CF Moto and Triumph get steel braided lines, none of the bikes had decent brake feel which is a pretty standard outcome of having axial master cylinder and axially mounted calipers. The J1 brakes on the CF Moto had the most bite among them all and the Tiger 660 was surprisingly lacking in the beginning but I did eventually realize that the Tiger 660 brakes needed some braking in. I would honestly recommend better brake pads to be among the first upgrades on all the four motorcycles and steel braided brake lines for the Versus and the V-Strom. And while I may not have specifically felt anything wrong or exceptionally good with any of the tires, I finally found a bike on which the Dunlop Sportsmax tires work pretty well. CF Moto gets Pirellis in the US and Metzlers and CSTs in some other countries. I do like the Bridgestones on the V-Strom but the Michelins on the Tiger 660 are my favorite street tires and I would highly recommend those because of the balance they strike between good grip and decent durability. And before we go to pricing and availability, let me first talk about the standard accessories and rider aids that you get for the money. All bikes get cast alloy wheels but the V-Strom 650 in its XT trim gets wire spoked wheels which are tubeless tire compatible which is quite a premium wheel type for this segment. All bikes get adjustable windshields but the Tiger 660's one hand windshield adjustment takes the cake in terms of ease of use. Versus 650 places second because it requires a two hand operation and I wouldn't recommend doing that on the go. CF Moto requires twisting two knobs to adjust which is not super user friendly. The V-Strom 650 continues to be archaic still requiring tools to adjust the windshield and I did try the tallest and the lowest settings during the test rides and I can confidently report that I wasn't impressed with the wind protection on any of the four bikes. I would highly recommend aftermarket windshields for all of them. What I was impressed with were the adjustable clutch and brake levers on the CF Moto 650 Adventura or the 650 MT and the Kawasaki Versus 650. V-Strom doesn't get either and the Tiger only gets brake lever adjustability. Another impressive set of accessories were the high quality shad panniers which the CF Moto 650 Adventura gets as standard versus gets side cases as an option with the base variant or standard with the LT trim in the US or Tour trim in the UK. V-Strom gets aluminum panniers in the US. They're optional on the base and the XT trim everywhere except the XT Adventure trim in the US that gets panniers as standard. Triumph gets color matched side cases as optional in the US, UK and Australia but in some countries black is the only side case color option. Without the panniers however, the Versus 650 tail section looks the neatest because of nicely tucked away brackets which you can't exactly say about the V-Strom and before I start harping upon the electronics or lack thereof, let me call out the lack of remote preload adjuster on the CF Moto which is a standard feature on the rest of the bikes. A lot of people may not think too much of that but the remote preload adjuster sure is handy when you switch between riding solo or with a passenger and or luggage. Keeping up with the times, all the bikes have LED headlamps, turn signals and tail lights except the V-Strom 650 which stays conventional with the lights as well as the dash which a lot of Strom troopers actually tend to prefer I'm told. CF Moto dash is pretty fancy and gets Bluetooth smartphone connectivity but so does the Versus and the Tiger 660. What I found really annoying with the CF Moto Dash was that a moderate amount of glare on an overcast-ish day in Florida made the Dash absolutely unreadable, especially when the sun was behind me. Rest of the bikes fared much better on Dash readability. All the bikes except the CF Moto get traction control but I'm honestly not sure if any of them need it. What they did need was cruise control but none of them got it. Even the Tiger Sport 660 which has a ride by wire throttle doesn't get cruise control which is rather disappointing at this point. Thankfully USB charging is at least an option on all and standard on CF Moto which also gets two riding modes while the Tiger 660 gets three. And for all that these are the prices across the US, UK, Australia and India that you will need to pay. Of course you gotta add the dealer fee, shady charges and taxes on top of that. But you can see that the CF Moto is indeed priced really competitively. There is a catch that I will talk about in a 
few minutes, but let's first cover three more aspects of cost of ownership beyond the price of the bike. First is fuel efficiency. The V-Strom 650 comes out on top and the Versus 650 is close behind. In fact, these figures are based on some internet research, so your actual range may vary depending on your riding style and riding conditions. The Versus 650 does have the biggest fuel tank in the group and could take you 250 miles or more before it runs dry. The CF Moto and the Tiger 660 are also not too bad because I do not know very many riders who would ride longer than 200 miles at a stretch. Having said that, over a longer period of the time, the V Strom 650 may end up saving you more money on cost of fuel. And that brings me to another aspect of cost, the required frequency of maintenance. Interestingly, the Tiger 660 requires the least frequent regular service while the CF Moto requires it every 3000 miles. The same engine in the Versus 650 for some reason requires it a lot less. And the so-called bulletproof V Strom 650 requires regular service every 3200 miles. Now regular service is not that expensive especially if you are a little hands-on and can change oil and check basic stuff yourself. The one that does require a trained professional is the valve clearance check which is also called major service meaning a proper hole in your pocket. And these numbers are so intriguing I had to reopen all four user manuals to double check them. The CF Moto requires a check at 24,000 miles. V Strom and Versus require it a lot more frequently and Tiger 660 needs it at 20k. Now these numbers not only mean how frequently you have to get an expensive maintenance service done but also give you an indication of the confidence the manufacturers have in their bikes. This is also supported by the warranty they give you as standard. It varies by region but CF Moto does have the longest standard warranty across the US, UK and Australia. Triumph gives you a standard two-year warranty across the three countries while the Japanese have differentiated it by region. Some might say that Kawasaki and Suzuki have cultivated such a strong perception about their reliability that they do not need to prove themselves with a longer warranty period. I'll leave that for you to debate in the comments below but generally speaking they do tend to be more reliable than European motorcycles in my personal experience. The interesting one that we need to talk about is CF Moto. While I am just as skeptical about the reliability of a Chinese built motorcycle as any average rider, I can't ignore the fact that people in the UK and Australia who have been riding these bikes for a while tend to point out that they have been surprisingly reliable. I have also noticed that they have used some well-known brands for some of the parts like Shad Side Cases, Continental ABS, J1 Brakes and at the end of the day it might actually be a Kawasaki engine if the rumors are to be believed. Bigger question for the US specifically would be one parts availability until they get popular enough and two resale value. OEM parts availability may get addressed much faster because my research leads me to believe that they do have warehouses in the US and dealers seem to indicate that they are doing alright. Aftermarket parts may be a matter of a couple of years, especially if CF Moto motorcycles do catch on around here. Resale value would be the one that may take a lot longer. So that begs the question, which one of these motorcycles could be the best? And if you are like me and do not care about modern tech on a 70 horsepower motorcycle and are experienced enough to handle a relatively heavy bike with confidence the V-Strom 650 is a giggle machine that is trusted and reliable. Used OEM parts and new aftermarket options are easy to find and often cheap. If I were to buy a touring bike now, I know 100% I would love to be a Strom Trooper myself. The Versus 650 does enjoy all the same conveniences just in a different flavor. The single thing on the Versus that I'm not a fan of is the parallel twin engine characteristic. If you like that engine, it is an easy pick over the Suzuki for better looks, comfier seats and a little bit of tech conveniences like Bluetooth and TFT Dash. The Tiger 660 is for people who really appreciate modern gadgets on a motorcycle and prefer sporty touring over relaxed old-fashioned cruising. It's been around for a couple of years now so parts are available fairly easy but they will cost a little more than Japanese bikes. Triumph service by the way also tends to cost a little more depending on where you live. And before I talk about CF Moto let me remind you that all the shortcomings that I did point out on each bike thankfully most of them do have aftermarket solutions that I have carefully curated and linked in the description below. You're welcome. Now let me talk about CF Moto a bit candidly and without bias. It sure is a bit reassuring that they do offer better warranty coverage than others. CF Moto 650 MT owners in other countries have reported that they have been reliable and if the internet is to be believed, the heart may be a Kawasaki engine. If that makes you feel comfortable enough, it is a great value proposition for the package you're getting. But if you ask me, would I buy a CF Moto 650 Adventura, my honest answer would be a no for a few reasons. 
one, I absolutely fell in love with the VSTROM 650, so I'd pick that. Number two, I tend to switch bikes every three to four years and resale value is a big consideration for me. Number three, just the day I was finishing up recording this video, CF Moto Global teased a 700MT that uses a 693cc inline twin engine that puts out 74 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque. So I would probably wait for that if I was into CF Moto. Would you? Let me know in the comments. And if you are thinking that I left out some other competitors, that's because I couldn't get back-to-back -back test rides in time. But you can can watch these comparison videos for touring and adventure touring bikes that I have done before in as much detail. This is Faraz helping the riding community one video at a time.